Hi guys, welcome to this trick of sick this week. Got Dave Palmer here, just giving you guys a shout, thanking each and every one of you for subscribing and um, and making sure that you're a part of this uh, this giveaway tonight. So we're uh, we're gonna post the giveaway here in just a bit. Uh, what had happened, what had went down, you know, and everything with the Tesla deal. So thank you guys for staying tuned, watching all the Tesla build and. Uh, on another note, this episode is going to be about uh, some gauges, some wiring, uh, tech tips for an LS-based engine that was put into like a, an 80 model Jeep. So I think it's an 84. So uh, you guys enjoy the episode. Stay tuned. And uh, like I said, uh, we're going to announce uh, who won all the hot rod gauges. And uh, we're going to give you a little bit of update on the Tesla build truck, on the numbers, the figures, and everything that came in. I think we did a little bit of that on the last episode, but we'll just refresh you guys' memory. So uh, let's get on to the Jeep. All right, later, guys. Welcome to this episode of This uh, Trick is Sick. I'm your... Uh, host and lead fabricator Gerald Horton. Uh, today we're working on an 84 uh, Jeep. Uh, it's an LS swap project. We didn't do the swap but uh, some of our friends wanted us to fix some of the stuff and the problems that they had uh, on it. Some of the problems that they had was their gauges didn't work with the LS you know because they're analog gauges. Uh, so we have new analog gauges for it here uh, that, we, that we've purchased. We've got new uh, We've got an adapter uh, set that we bought from uh, Summit Racing uh, to go in it. We also have a new uh, a speedo here for it. Uh, the old speedometer was uh, cable driven, so the new one is actually a GPS speedometer, so you don't have to hook it to the transmission. It's very accurate, and they're very simple. Uh, you can uh, just hook power and uh, place your antenna up high, uh, hot in the ground, bolt it in there, and uh, you've got a speedometer. Uh, also, we special ordered this one. Uh, it has the gentleman's name on the back here. It says it's a, an, uh, his name edition on it. And as you can see, it's got an odometer. It goes up to 90 and it looks, it's a really nice piece. It looks like the factory one other than it's uh, GPS. Uh, we also have a backup camera, a new stereo for it that we're gonna be placing in it, as well as uh, we replaced the rear bumper and the uh, spare tire holder. Uh, we have a uh, shock to go on the front, uh, we call it the death wobble shock uh, to, to help with the steering control, the bump steer and all that on the steering. Uh, we're going to be covering all those things on this episode. Uh, we've got a junkyard LS here because uh, you can't really see down in the engine compartment where, where you hook the oil and stuff up. And so uh, we're going to kind of go over that a little bit. Uh, so we're going to get started here and I'll kind of show you on this motor here. Uh, because you won't be able to see what I'm doing down behind the motor in between the firewall and the engine. Uh, some of you may know this, some of you don't. Uh, on the typical LS, the oil standing unit is right here on top, uh, just like your old style GMs. Uh, the only difference is, is this is a, a metric fitting and, and you can't go down to the local part house and just get the metric fitting or you can't around here anyway. Uh, we found that Summit Racing sells this nifty little kit that comes in this bag here and it comes with a, uh, with a new fitting here has your O-ring and everything on it, and it'll screw right in there, and then your, uh, your fitting for your manual oil pressure gauge will screw right into it, your eighth inch uh, pipe, and I believe that's an 18 millimeter uh, metric thread, and it screws right into the block here. As you can see here, I'm gonna screw it in this dirty one, and we'll clean it before we put it in our good engine, but this is just a junkyard engine, but it screws right in there and allows you to do it. Uh, Without this adapter, you can't do it. It's gonna leak, it, it's not the right thread. You're gonna, you're gonna strip it out and all that stuff if you're trying to screw a standard thread in it. Uh, so that's one of the things we got uh, to replace on this one so he'll know how much oil pressure he has on his motor. And then also uh, the same kit, this particular kit here, well, you can buy that fitting uh, individually or you can buy the little kit that we bought. This little kit we bought here actually has the uh, the one for the electric temperature sensor. And so uh, our Speedo has an electric temperature gauge in it. We also have a, a manual gauge here. So in one head, we, we'll put a fitting in there that converts it, that our temperature gauge will go in. And the other one, this, this temperature sending unit that comes with our Speedo will screw right in. 
and of course right down here in the head you can pull out this allen head bolt which is an eight millimeter allen head bolt this little thing will screw right into the side of the cylinder head and of course you're gonna you're gonna put pipe dope and everything on it so it doesn't leak and then you run your wires from your speedo right out there clip it in and you'll your temperature gauge will work it's a pretty nice little nifty kit i highly recommend it uh when you're doing it the speedo is is awesome we've got several of them and for the projects that we're building around the shop uh, like I said it just takes a hot wire and a ground wire and uh, it's got it comes with the antenna uh, the, uh, well let's see where's it at here. right here it's got a GPS antenna for the speedometer you just place it as high as you can place it up here all the instructions and everything this is your wiring harness for it for your speedometer with all your instructions that comes with it uh, this is your temperature sending unit wires that comes with it and it, it even sends you the, the fuel gauge wires for hooking up your fuel level. So this is a really, really nice kit. They're very affordable. I don't remember exactly how much that unit cost, but it seems like it was right around 100 bucks, maybe a little bit more because this one's customized with his name in it. Uh, but you can get them in any size. Uh, they go from like two inch uh, up, to, up to ours. And like I said, ours is a, a pretty good size one for this Jeep. Uh, but uh, anyway, we'll kind of get started on this project and uh, I won't bore you with all the details of it because uh, uh, I might forget something. But, uh, and this is my first video, so I'm probably messing up a little bit, but we'll get better as we go. I'm trying to help Dave out, get some of these videos out here on these, uh, these tips and tricks. And uh, uh, I think that's about it. Uh, I'm sure he'll, he'll thank all of our sponsors. Uh, Again, because he knows them better than I do. I'm, I'm the guy behind the scene turning the wrenches and, and running the cutting torch and the welder. Uh, but uh, we'll, we'll kind of stumble through this and everything. And I'll kind of just give you a walk around of the Jeep, show you inside before here. And then we'll get started changing all this stuff out. I'm alone. I'm a broken home. I gave you all the bricks that I own and know. I'm letting go. I'm breaking these walls down. Breaking these walls. As you can see here, we've got uh, analog gauges in here, uh, and uh, we'll uh, we'll be changing all those out and uh, cleaning up all the wiring underneath there. We've already uh, installed new uh, kicker stereo speakers in the dash, as well as the kicker uh, stereo speaker pods up here. Ran the wires down through the roll cage and everything for a really nice insulation. Comes with the clamps and everything up there. It's kind of hard to see. It's a little dark up there, but it's a really nice installation on that. And some of this stuff I didn't get videoed beforehand. Uh, we installed the new bumper back here on the back along with the spare tire holder and that massive spare tire on the back. And uh, when we hook the backup camera up, we'll also be hooking up the LED lights in the bumper so uh, they can see behind them. Uh, the gentleman that owns this is going to let his wife drive it, and uh, so she's going to have a hard time seeing behind her with that big old massive spare tire, so we're going to install a backup camera, and the LS transmission allows us to do that. We can tap into it, so when you put it in reverse, it'll power up the backup camera, and there'll be a big screen on the, on the stereo that folds up, and it'll allow it to uh, uh, be seen behind her, so it's going to be a nice little ride for them uh, when we're done here. And uh, they're talking about us doing some other upgrades to it eventually. I don't know if it's paint and body or what, but uh, we, uh, we did, redid some brakes and things like that. Replaced a couple of dri uh, drive shaft on it that was a little short. And uh, just quite a few little odds and ends. We're about to wrap this project up, but uh, we'll kind of just let you uh, see how it unfolds here. And thanks for tuning in. Okay, we've removed our stock unit here. And... Uh, let me just tell you, this, this screw right here, which is up on the top on the passenger side of your vehicle, has got all the heater ducts, so it's extremely hard to get to that one. These other three are not bad, but that one there is. Uh, you unhook your speedometer cable, of course you unhook your uh, <coughs> fuel gauge and your uh, temperature gauge here, and uh, you know then your turn signal wires here, your uh, bright lights, and then of course these other ones are for your dash lights, uh, which we just unplugged them, laid them down. These here you had to cut. Uh, because they was they was hardwired in and didn't want to come out uh, And we're going to splice onto these wires in the new unit here as you can see the new unit is right here 
And as you can see, it's a direct replacement for it, uh, other than it's a lot nicer. And, uh, you know, uh, it's all uh, digital and GPS speedometer. And you can see, you know, it's quite a bit, quite a bit more friendly here. Uh, on the new unit here, it does tell you that this is where your water temperature plugs in. It does tell you here that your fuel level's here. And then uh, the orange and green wire down here goes to your right turn signal and so on and so forth. Uh, all the instructions tells you where everything goes so you can wire it up so your, all of your stuff will work. Just like it did with this one when it was the original new Jeep, but uh, this stuff didn't work when you put the late model motor in it. So that's what we're working on now. And uh, I'll take you around there and kind of show you inside there real quick. Them over here, got my fender cover on, got my wrenches out, got my sending units here. I'm fixing to pull them out and drain the water. Uh, you don't have to drain the water, but uh, if you don't, you're going to make a little bit of a mess. But if you're pretty quick, you can pull the old plug out, slide the new stuff in, tighten it up, and lose minimal water. And then when you start the engine back up, you'll top it all the fluids back off. Uh, as you can see here, i got quite a bit of a little mess there underneath there. I've got uh, all the gauges out. You notice the stereo's out. Uh, we took the old stereo out and that'll be the last thing we put back in it because everything is up above it And it just makes it so much easier uh, And then like I said, we've got to we've got to clean up all that wiring there uh, get rid of everything we don't need and uh, Cap off anything that that needs to be left for the factory harness So it doesn't short out or anything like that when they take this thing off roading uh, and so on and so forth so uh, It's gonna be a nice little thing when we get done uh, just wanted to kind of update you here on our progress and I'm gonna get back at it. Travel then go along. Yeah, what's the point in us if I never know? Yeah, if you're gonna leave, I'ma let you go. I'm tired. All right, we're back on our uh, 84 Jeep this morning. Uh, as you can see, I've got the. Uh, GPS speedo installed the the new gauges installed everything's wired up in here. There's kind of a quite a bit of wiring there uh, This this one here has the fuel gauge temperature gauge that kind of stuff in the the speedo But you can get a GPS speedometer without without all that in it with it's just a speedometer and when in, when you get those They're real simple. Uh, I think it's like a four wire application. There's a hot wire that goes to the when the instrument cluster is powered up and then there's a ground wire, uh, a lighting circuit wire, so your lights work with your dash lights. And then there's what they call a GPS hotspot, which uh, what it does, it keeps the GPS hot. As you can see, we've got it ran outside here. We've got to put a fuse in it and mount it here. It doesn't uh, draw very much amperage. I think it's like 25 milliamps, so it will not run your battery dead. But what it does is, is it it helps you acquire the signal for the satellite faster. You know, you could be one to three minutes without a speedometer if you just fire it up and take off uh, uh, once you shut it off. And if, especially after it's been powered down for four hours or so, it loses uh, it loses its memory. So with that GPS hotspot, uh, it'll uh, it'll retain its memory. So it always knows where it's at. It may still take up to a minute to get it because the satellites obviously move in the sky. But this is a real nice little setup here. All right, I got the speedo hooked up, all the uh, sending units in it. We're uh, letting it warm up, checking it for leaks. Uh, as you can see, temperature gauge, gas gauge there, oil pressure. Everything seems to be working good. Uh, I misspoke when I, uh, when I said that the speedo was about a hundred bucks. Uh, this unit here, was about six hundred dollars uh the hundred dollar one is just the speedometer itself this one here has a temperature gauge fuel gauge turn signal indicators bright light uh this one is obd uh compatible as you can see there i think you can anyway the turn signal indicators work all that good stuff uh it's a little more in-depth wiring it up fuel gauge works uh on the fuel gauge all of your uh Sending units are different ohm readings and that kind of stuff. Uh, with with this particular one, it gives you a chart here that uh, tells you what the uh, 
what the own reading are and all that stuff and it gives you walks you through setting it up calibrating it which i did all that and uh, now we just got to clean up all the wiring there and get all that uh, finished cleaned up get rid of the rest of the old stuff we don't need and then we're ready to install the backup camera and the and the stereo unit and this thing will be ready to be cleaned up and got out of here so uh hopefully this uh little tip here helped you out a little bit uh if you're ls swapping stuff or if you've got old old stuff that uh you put late model motors and stuff in and you can't get the uh speedometer to work uh, hopefully this gps uh speedometer will be the ticket for what you need all right guys uh dave palmer here i uh just give you an update um I was just going to let you guys know, I know Droll was, uh, he's done an excellent job of putting this stuff in for this old Jeep, for this old boy with this LS base style engine. Uh, the Speedo on this one, okay, the ones that have the special edition or we can have graphics put on the inside and they're all electronic. See this one like has the guy's last name, it says Turpin Edition. Uh, plus we got the fuel and we've got everything all built in um these are more about six to eight hundred dollars so they're not the hundred dollar bill one or less i know drill didn't mention something about it but i i uh, i got crossed up on what i was giving him so i just want to make that correction real quick uh he didn't know and and uh because i'm the one that generally purchases most of the stuff uh but he he does purchase quite a bit of stuff but i'm just saying that i just want to correct that so you guys got to look in this thing down you go man you can't find those for a hundred dollars uh, these are from a company that we use that we can we can even put your logo to your company inside there uh, We can do all kinds of stuff. So anyways, it's a little Jeep build We got this 84 Jeep that we got going on and uh, Just to let you guys know that uh, we've been customizing it and we've got everything hooked up to for the rear backup lights but this is for a friend of mine's uh, wife and what we got to do now is um let me walk over here. I want to show you guys something that's pretty cool, which we've been modifying everything on. It's starting to look good now. Uh, that this is a very cool deal. I wanted to show you guys how easy this is. We're putting in a good sound stream stereo system here, DVD player. And what we're going to do is we're going to override the stereo so that she can let the kids watch movies or GPS when the flat screen comes out and flips up. But what is very cool is make sure that you try to get one of these with the backup camera option so that you can, um, you know, you can back up to your trailers and it's just easier for you to see. And since this is for his wife, we wanted to make sure that, uh, you know, that she was taken care of as well. Well, sorry about that, guys. Had somebody come in and got my attention and whatnot. Now my son's in here. Oh, Junior there. Say hi, Bubba. Hi. Bubba man. He's coming in to help me out here in the shop but anyways we had to what the deal is is uh get back to the stereo deal uh, i got a stereo that's got a dvd built-in backup system and whatnot and uh hey bubba do me a favor buddy will you make sure that that door's closed we got the air conditioning on thank you son um and what the deal is is that the sound stream is a very good quality uh stereo system and what we're going to do is you know these are pretty basic everybody's put a cd player in for now and dvd player is pretty much the same thing and what we'll do is we'll override this brown wire here and put it to ground so that the dvd will work and and everything will work while you're driving along what's cool about this deal is uh this guy's wife is one going to be driving this and we've installed the backup camera up under here so she could see right to the hitch you know to hook up to stuff and him too but the next level deal is, well, these cameras you can get for about $13 off of eBay. That's a pretty clear one. That's the day and night vision. And uh, the stereo, you know, obviously was two or $300 or more, something like that. These sound streams aren't cheap. Uh, we're gonna put that in. But what is the cool deal is, is you see this little mechanism right here? We got this off of uh, eBay for like, I think it's under $20, 20, 25 bucks. And yeah, that's the rear view camera. Well, anyways, we'll get back to this deal. They actually have this little module right here. And what you do is, is you pick this up 
and it has two ends just like this. And I'll show you these two ends. Let me unplug it here. The two ends, this little dude here has two wires. It's got a hot and a negative, and it's got a video. And see that little antenna out the side? Can you guys believe I just found this out? Just figured it out. And I'm sure they've had it for a little bit, but kind of shocked me. I'm going to plug it into the video side of this. Or uh, whatever you call it, camera out on your deal. And what's crazy is, you see this? You plug that in, and you don't have to run any of the camera wiring underneath this Jeep. You won't have to run it underneath your uh, your truck or your car. They actually have a deal that's 2.4, 2.6 gigahertz transmission wireless video, okay? Uh, that you actually, now when you put your stereos in or you put the rear view, you can even have a backup camera, you know, that you can buy for under 100. We're going to show you that deal pretty soon. But instead of running all the wiring underneath your vehicle and out to your deal, oh my God, people, please buy the little, uh, you know, buy this little, that little $20 module. And like I said, on the, uh, the camera side, on the back, you plug the other side up on this side comes in two pieces plug this one up in the back and uh you just hardwire it to some power generally right there to where your stereo hooks in it transmits a signal automatically back to the camera and the video shoots through it and you don't have to run any of the wiring underneath the vehicle underneath the vehicle underneath your rv underneath your backup camera system it's it's insane so they're just they're they're getting so efficient with this stuff that it's insane so well, anyways, we're going to get this thing put in, and uh, we'll show you how good it works here in a little bit. And I'm actually going to hook up the reverse switch to one of these wires so that even if you're looking at the... It'll be like a newer car. You know when you throw it in reverse and the rear view camera comes up automatically? But I just wanted to show you guys this little video. See, 2.4 gigahertz wireless color video receiver. I just can't believe now you don't have to run the wiring underneath. Um, you know, I've heard of a lot of Bluetooth stuff, but as of streaming the video to stuff like this underneath your car and whatnot, I came across this. We bought it. I did put it on a vehicle here about a month and a half ago, and I told Gerald, I said, hey, this is some this is some new stuff, man. This is pretty cool, and you won't have to run none of the wiring underneath. So, But anyways, I'm going to get this guy's stereo in here. We're going to get that wireless backup camera set up in and we'll we'll get back to it. So, all right, thanks guys. All right, we got the camera mounted right here. Just to let you guys know, we had an issue with the stereo. We found something out. We had conflicting information on the directions on when putting one of these things in. Um, <clears throat> what you'll want to do is, whenever you got the wireless head and you plug it in down here to this one, you'll want to hook this up to the backup light power and then ground the wire out. This little tip and trick so you can skip out having to cut it loose and redo it and on this side of the wireless module which is i know this looks like a little bit of rat's nest because we got to clean it up but on this side you want to wire it to the output backup camera switch I'm trying to think here. Backup camera switch, yeah, you'll want to hook that up to that deal. So, uh, you want to hook that up and then you will want to, uh, you want to make sure that you energize the other side of the transmitter directly to ignition. So, it's got to stay, uh, the power, it's got two wires, two power wires. And what you'll want to do is one of them, you want to hook to that little little switch. So on the directions, it actually showed that you had to, uh, here, I'll show you. And actually I got them right here. Kind of conflicting. Well, when the, I was kind of surprised with this stereo, it didn't show you where to hook 
the backup camera really too. I guess they expect you just to know. Well, it shows the, the, the RCA hookup, but it doesn't show that there's an auxiliary wire in here that activates, it clicks, it turns it on, which a lot of stereos have. But see right here, it says hook or output to your RCA jack and then AC line right there. But then right here, it says 12 volt voltage. Um, and where we were getting kind of crossed up there was, you know, trying to figure out, okay, 12 volt voltage and this is accessory. You know, we thought this was an accessory voltage, but no, this right here, you'll need to hook it to the stereos uh, wire that says that it is a video activation wire for the backup camera. It says backup ACT or something. I guess it means activation. So that's what we did was instead of, you know, assuming this is accessory because there's nothing else on here. This is the Chinese stuff. What you want to do is to the accessory, you'll hook it to the video video switch leg is what we would technically call it in the electrical field so and then this right here you'll just put it to uh voltage to where it just uh it clicks on with uh with ignition so it basically is just going to stay running is what i'm saying this one will click on with the backup lights which is the transmitter for the back side with the camera so this little accessory line um uh, don't hook it to your accessories. Hook it to your switch leg that says that it's like an activation camera wire. So that way it'll kick on. So, and what the mechanism is for this wireless system, and I think the reason why the directions weren't super clear was because you had a, uh, you know th this stereo they didn't have that wireless transmitter that was out yet and now we got the wireless transmitter and it actually physically wires a little bit different than a standard one so a standard one they got one up here you just hook it to 12 volts and plug in the rca jack and you're good to go um, this though with the wireless setup it's got two different contact points the back will actually be kind of well the back's the activation this has your transmitter on it, but you keep the power, I guess, supplied so that it'll instantly click so that the 2.4 gigahertz transmission will actually activate instantly. And the accessory line up here is actually the switch mechanism just to click the screen. It's just a sc screen flip. So it'll automatically, when you hit it in reverse, the other transmitter comes on. And when it comes on, it throws a signal real fast to the front and it says, hey, turn it off stereo, click the backup camera on. So now we've got it where, you know, it, it instantly clicks. So it's pretty cool. So this works out and then I'll, uh, I'll show you the finished product here in just a second. And make sure that you get your camera right side up because the cheaper cameras, this one is clear, but the, uh, we accidentally had it upside down. So, and you can't really tell which side's up, which side's down with the little Chinese ones from eBay. So, well, let me get to it. Let me finish up. All right, thanks, guys. All right. Let's make sure. Make sure everything's good to go.
Oh, cool. Went right back. Man, it's working perfect. I need to check the power steering fluid before we put that hood all the way down. Everything else was low. Looks, it looks good. All right, guys. Thank y'all for tuning in to uh, this week's Trick is Sick uh, with uh, with Gerald and me and and the rest of the crew working on that uh, that LS based Jeep. Uh, we did some more work to it. I don't think we posted near anything and everything that we did, but uh, hope you guys enjoyed the episode with uh, some mods and uh, worked out some kinks with uh, putting an LS based engine in your uh, your your little Jeep. So, uh, on another note. Um, the, um, uh, Tesla truck build, the winner, believe it or not, we had nobody fulfill the, uh, the, uh, the requirements, believe it or not. We had a few that got kind of close. looks like they had missed a couple episodes, didn't post, uh, uh, you know, any comments, a few of them on, uh, especially the last few episodes. And we just have to, uh, you know we're gonna have to give this away so uh what we did was was one of our guys here i told you whenever somebody doesn't fulfill the obligations or anything for one of these contest entries we actually give the parts to local race car guys that we know or guys at our shop so um sam flute right here is the one that got the uh wound up with the race gauges he's very excited very happy um but you guys make sure that you check this uh you know check all your boxes whenever you're entering these contests all i ask for is be a subscriber watch each episode i think uh there was five to eight of them concerning the tesla truck and you have to post a comment there's only three requirements on this thing so but right here we give the deal to our boy and check it out that you guys missed out if you've seen sam he was super happy so um we did give him the race gauges he said that he can uh use them on an old hot rod and whatnot and uh and uh and he's super excited that uh he actually got something from it so we do try to help our boys out too from time to time um if you guys would stay tuned for next week's episode uh we will be posting our next giveaway which has to do with turbos uh we're gonna have some turbo equipment uh on our next episode that where we're giving away a bunch of turbo stuff and uh we'll tell you what you have to do in order to win that make sure that you follow those three steps it's exactly the same three steps for every damn one we've given away uh, if you guys want to have a chance or be eligible to win, we even gave away a free LS engine on here. So there's a guy down south that got an LS engine. Uh, we've got another guy that got a, a standard four bolt main 350 V8. Uh, we give away complete engines, intakes, carburetor, all kinds of stuff. So uh, thank you to Kevin Blumenthal, JH Tire, Peace Machine Shop, Cheetah Race Engine Development, uh, Ampco Electric, Ace, AAPI. Um, Summit Racing, MMA Max with Brian, um, each and every subscriber. Thank you guys very much. And, uh, just keep us posted. You got any questions, got any ideas for a new episode? We're more than happy to, uh, uh, appease or listen to ideas that you got. So, uh, check out our next episode. And like I said, we'll be having our other giveaway. I actually have it right here, but I ain't gonna let you see it till the next episode. All right. Later guys. Got to get back to it. Right, bye. Bye.